Okay, I wanted to go through in detail uh, this question that's on your worksheet. Let's just look at it. I got uh, y equals x cubed plus x minus 2. And if we consider a new function that is the inverse function of the original one, what is the derivative of that function at x equals 0? Okay, so there's a few things to look at. Um, very quickly, let's take a look at the function. Doesn't hurt. And if we look at that, we can see that it's a pretty easygoing function. In fact, we don't even need to cut this up at all. We're going to get unique values uh, even with the inverse function. We don't have anywhere where we have two x's for one y, which means with the inverse function, we're not going to have any situation where we have two y's for the same x. So that's, that's nice. It's nice they gave us something that simple. Now I'm going to look at this in two different ways. Uh, the first way I'm going to look at is called using the implicit function to solve this. So let's just let's just say that now. Implicit. So in this case, um, I'm just going to look at my function, and rather than saying y equals x cubed plus x minus 2, I'm going to say now my function is x equals y cubed plus y minus 2, and I'm not going to do anything else with it. I'm going to say, okay, that's, that's my function. I haven't really changed it so it says y equals. In fact, that looks like it would be a real pain in the butt. There'd be a lot of uh, difficulties in doing that. But what instead I'm going to do is that I'm looking for the inverse, uh, sorry, I'm not the inverse, the derivative of this, and I'm going to get the derivative by uh, just simply using implicit. So uh, let me see, the derivative of x is 1, derivative of y cubed is going to be 3y squared, and don't forget, got to use a little chain rule here, it'll be dy dx, and, or I could have just simply said y prime. And then the y, that will be dy dx, and the negative 2 will just go to 0. So I'm, I'm left with that. Now I do want to kind of separate my dy dx. So I'm going to just keep going for a moment and say, okay, that'll be still 1 equals. Now, what can I say here? I'm going to take my dy dx out, and that would be times 3y squared plus 1. So therefore, let me just move the dy dx over here. dy dx is equal to 1 divided by 3y squared plus 1. And um, some people have said, well, wait a minute, I've got this y here. I'm in a lot of trouble. I don't know what to do with that. How do I, how do I get rid of that? And uh, allow me to tell you, do not worry about that. All you need to find is, is the y that you need. Now, that's not um, as simple as perhaps we're, we're clear. So we're looking, let me see, we want to we wanna find, let's just make sure we realize what we're trying to do. We're trying to find dy dx at x equals 0. That's that's up here, g prime of 0. That's what we're looking for. But all I got are y's. There, there's actually no x's, so I need to find the other point. I got to find out where the point is uh, for this situation. Now, how, how do I do that? Well, let's think about this for a moment. Now, I am, um, I am let's just call that, we're going to say this is um, g of x. So I'm just saying, well, I'm looking for um, what g of 0 is g of 0 is I'm, I'm, lo I'm looking to find out what is the what is what is the y what is the y and uh, how do I how do I find that well I could plug it in but oh my god that's really horrible I'm just gonna get 0 minus I'm gonna get um what I would end up was I'd get y cubed plus y equals positive 2 um, perhaps I can do that um, right now I think I can do it it's actually pretty easy now that I look at it but perhaps, let's just pretend that this proves to be a little bit harder. So what I could do is I could say, okay, I'm going to do that. Or I could go back to the original function and say, well, wait a minute. If I am looking to see uh, if x is equal to 0, what is the y? 
I could also go to the original function and say, well, wait a minute, if the y is 0, what is the x? And this is another method I can do to find it. Um, now, in this case, I can say, well, what cube plus itself equals 2? There's not too many choices, actually, here. I'm gonna, I, I know that y is going to have to be equal to 1. And as you look at this, I'm going to have the same kind of situation, x cubed plus x is equal to 2 so therefore what do I can say x is going to be have to equal to 1 now remember this is the 1 of f of x right and this is the what which means the x of f of x is the y of of g of x that's how it's working here so my answer is 1 that's what I'm looking for but just so it's clear um, if you are not sure how to find the other value by just simply plugging it in, look at the original function and switch what you're trying to find. Remember, I'm looking for a y of g of x if my x is 0. If my x is 0. So if I go to the original function, I'm saying, well, what if the y is 0? What is my x? And I should get the same answer. So in this case, let me see. I've got, okay. So, okay, so y equals 1. What do I do? Now I know. I just simply say, well, then, therefore, let me, let me make a beautiful new color for this thing. dy dx at x equals 0 is what? Well, 1 over 3, 1 squared plus 1, and that is going to be equal to 1 over 3 plus 1, that is 1 over 4. So that's one way of doing it. That is one way to solve this problem. Now many people find this other method to be a little better. For some people it's just easier to think about. So uh, this is the equation you want to use for a, uh, just by simply solving this in any way without implicit, without using implicit. So I'm going to write it down here. It's going to look a little funny at first. So let's say we have an inverse function and I'm looking for the derivative at some value. Um, let's just call it x. I mean it doesn't really matter. Now how do I get it? There's a kind of an interesting little equation that we use. Okay, it is equal to 1 over, in other words, the reciprocal of the derivative, derivative of the original function. Now, this is kind of interesting. Using f, f inverse of x. So take a look at that. We're going to kind of Kind of break that apart there a little bit. We've got an inverse function and we're just looking for the derivative according to some x value. Now that is exactly the same as saying uh, g prime of 0. So let's just simply say I'm going to replace that now. I'm just going to say I got g prime at 0. And that is going to be equal to 1 over the inverse function. Now that is inverse function of the original. Now remember that's not this f prime is not g. It is f prime. It's my original function, my x cubed plus x minus 2. But I am going to be plugging in the inverse, f inverse of x. So the what I'm going to plug in, think about it, f inverse of 0. What's another way of saying that? I'm just going to change that again because... I don't want to say f inverse. I'm going to say it's 1 over the derivative with respect to g of 0. In other words, what is this right here? This is the y value of g of 0. The y value. In other words, what g of 0, which is exactly the same thing as saying I want the y value of uh, g at x equals 0. And basically I'm saying if I plugged in x equals 0 into my, my new function, what is the y value you get? We've already done that. We did that before. We found that the y is equal to 1. 
we found out y is equal 1 at x equals 0 for g of 0. Right? Remember what we're talking about here. Now this is where you just really, really have to think. In other words, if g of 0 is equal to 1, I also know that f of 1 must equal 0. Because remember, g of 0 is the same thing as saying f inverse of 0 is equal to 1. That's the same thing. It's the same thing. I'm, I've just replaced inverse function of 0 with g of 0 just to make it easier to say. So I'm saying that if I plugged in 1 into my original function, I should get 0. Let me see. 1 cubed plus 1 minus 2 gives me, yes, gives me 0. And so it's the opposite holds true as well. These things are related to each other. Remember, this is really important to, to really get into your head, is that if I know an x value gives me a certain y value, I can switch them with my inverse function and use it in that way. So, so what am I saying? Let's, let's, let's change this again. What am I saying? I am saying that g prime of 0 is equal to 1 over the derivative of my original function with respect to 1. With respect to 1. And it will be the reciprocal of that slope. Notice what we're saying. The so so let's just let's just, just say it. Okay? I want to I want to really make it clear about what we're saying here. We're saying that the slope of, of the inverse function. inverse function at x comma y let's just say x1 y1 is equal to the reciprocal reciprocal the 1 over reciprocal of the original function in this case, we call it f of x. The original function that is located at y1, comma x1. In other words, I'm switching the values here. Take a look at that really carefully. Try that out on some functions. Take a look at that. Make sure you totally understand what I'm trying to say there. That is incredibly important. The slope of an inverse function at some x and y is going to be equal to the reciprocal of the original function at y comma x. Okay, so what am I so so let's just solve this. Okay, so that means therefore, therefore, let me give a different color so we can totally see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna uh, green. I haven't used green at all. So therefore, g prime of zero is going to be equal to one over now. What is the reciprocal of my original function? I haven't even done that. Okay, x cubed, that will be 3x, but x is now 1, squared, plus, what's the reciprocal of x? Uh, sorry, not the reciprocal. What is the derivative of x? That is equal to 1 minus 2. That is 0. I don't even include it. And so now I've got 1 over 3 times 1 squared plus 1. I've got an answer of 1 over 4. So that means the slope on g of x at at what's the what's the value zero comma one is equal to one over four, which also tells me something. It tells me that the slope on f of x at one comma zero is what? It's the reciprocal of this one, is 4. It's 1 over 1 over 4, which would be 4. Fascinating. Fascinating. Very interesting. Make sure that what I have just done makes a lot of sense to you. And if it does, then you should be fine with any other kind of derivatives of an inverse function. Uh, the most important ones being, of course, the trigonometric functions, but any of them. Just try some and see if you can actually make these things work, and uh, hopefully you'll be okay. All right, guys.
Talk to you later.